Okay? So I think we can get started. Welcome to another week uh, here in, in programming. And today we are going to continue our lecture series regarding web APIs. If you can remember uh, two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, we did some introduction work. You learn the basics of minimal API. We talked about what web APIs in general are. Um, and we did a bunch of coding. Last week, uh, we added the concepts of state management. We at least discussed in theory how you can store state in databases and files. You will learn storing states in databases at the end of the semester. Uh, and today, I would like to talk to you about Swagger. Swagger and open API specification. Have you ever heard about Swagger before? Well, I know that you have heard about Swagger because I gave you Swagger files when we worked with Angular, right? Did you cover Swagger or Open API in any other courses here in the school? No. No? Okay, so <laughs> let's assume somebody in a lower class asks you, hey, I've heard about Open API specification or Swagger. What is that? What would be your answer? Mm -hmm. A documentation for the API. A documentation for the API, exactly. You can put it like that. So let's draw a little bit on the, on the blackboard here. If you have a server here, this is a server, and this server has here an API, then what you say is that we, if we want to have a documentation, so here we have a developer. This developer asks himself or herself, what can this API do, right? Then this developer can take a look at the, let's draw it like that, at the swagger endpoint here and read the documentation, right? The developer will get back a documentation. This is exactly what you did when we did some Angular development together, right? I gave you such a file and you use the URL to get a documentation. You try to understand the API and then you use it. Okay, good. Yeah, that's fine. That's one possible way of using that. Can you think of any other use cases where something like this would be useful? What we just discussed is that we have a scenario where we have a user who wants to know what this, this API can do. What do you think? Would it make sense if we have a machine, a computer, asking itself the same question, what can this API do? That is, in fact, the most important thing that we can have for Swagger. That is, no, no. OK. That is one of the most important use cases that we have for Swagger. And this is exactly what we are going to talk about today. So let's draw this again and dive a little deeper. So what you said is perfectly right, but it's only part of the picture. Today, we want to dive a little bit deeper. Um, let's draw it like that, OK? Here, again, you have a server, and the server offers an API. Without this Swagger stuff, um, let, let's quickly talk about the name here. Swagger is the informal name of what we are doing here. It's the old name of what we are discussing here. It's not very professional. Swagger is a, a slang word, a, a, a word that is, yeah, try to do a Google search for swag or swagger and you will find a lot of interesting pictures. So uh, people started to say, well, that's not professional enough. We have to give it a more professional name. So nowadays, the correct name for the documentation here is open, oops, sorry, open API specification. So if you hear the term open API specification, it's the same name but a more professional name for the same topic. Okay? So if I talk about Swagger and if I talk about open API specification, oh yes, it's essentially the same. So this OAS endpoint documents the API that is here. So as I told you, this open API specification 
has two variants. On the one hand side, we have a documentation intended for the consumption of a human being. A human being can use this URL to read about the API. But the second one is also a documentation. But in this case, I'll draw it like that. We have a JSON document. This is a machine-readable documentation of the, op of the API. Now, what could we do with a machine-readable version of the API specification? It's essentially the same as the written documentation, but in a machine-readable format. Why would that make sense? The reason is pretty simple. What you can do with this JSON stuff is you can download a generator. The generator is some open source software. There are multiple generators from here. And what they do is they take the JSON as an input and then they can output utility classes and helper functions for various different programming languages. You could say, hey, generate me a class library, which is exactly a client for this API for my use in TypeScript. Or you could say, my program is written in C Sharp, so give me a C Sharp library, which is exactly tailored to this API. You do no longer need to manually create an HTTP client in Angular, for instance. That will be generated for you. There will be nice little methods which are called exactly like your API endpoints. If you don't like C-sharp, you can say, give me a Go library, or give me a Rust library, or whatever library you want to have. The idea of the open API specification is that you do not need to write your own helper libraries in every different language. This is done by this generator here. See? This generator does the necessary magic. And then in your client application, let's talk about the TypeScript here. Um, imagine that we are using an, an Angular client with TypeScript. This Angular client can now use, can now be used by the um, other way around. The TypeScript client can be used by Angular. Does it make sense? This is exactly what we do. And that inside of Angular, we can use the client to access the API in a type safe way. So far, when you did Angular development, it could happen very easily that you miss that you make a typing mistake in the URL, for instance. And with a generated client like that, you can't make a typing mistake anymore. Because you get a client which is which contains ready-made helper functions. Now let's think about what that means for updates, for instance. Imagine that you change something here in this API. This API is changed. You maybe add another mandatory argument for an API. Let's think about what's going to happen. This one will change. This JSON file will change. If you run the generator, if you rerun the generator here, it will give you a new, for instance, TypeScript client. This new TypeScript client will be used by your Angular application. And when you try to compile your Angular application, what is going to happen? It will not compile. Because the server has changed. And that is exactly what we want. We don't want to have runtime errors. Runtime errors are horrible. We want to know upfront that something is broken. And this can be done by using such a pipeline. Understand what I mean? That is super useful. Or imagine that you are a software as a service provider. You earn money by providing this API. Some of your customers may use TypeScript. Some of your customers may use C Sharp. Some of them may use Java. Some of them may use Kotlin, whatever. If you want to write by hand special client libraries, for all these programming languages, it will cost you a fortune. By using this open API specification and such a generator logic here, you do not need to write all these clients by hand. They are generated for you. How do you think a company like Microsoft 
is providing client libraries for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I don't know how many um, programming languages for their Azure platform, for instance. Exactly like that. They generate something like this, and then they have powerful generators, which generate all the client APIs automatically. Understand what I mean? Does this make sense? So open API specification, yes, it's a way of providing a human readable documentation. And in many cases, that's already very useful. But open API specification is more. It's the input for such a generator. Now today and tomorrow, we would like to focus on, we would like to focus on this part. It's the easier part. This is what we are primarily focusing on. This part here, we, we will just get it for free. It will just be there. I will show it to you and we are good. Um, before the written exam that is coming up, we are not going to take a look at the generator part. This is a little bit more complicated. I'm not sure if we will do that in this year, but if we will see each other next year, we will definitely try that out. So our focus now is how to build a minimal web API with, um, with open API specification to get a written documentation for humans and to get this JSON document. The part on the left-hand side is just so that you have a complete picture. Why are we doing that? But we will not try it yet. It would be a little bit too large and a little bit too complicated. Do you have questions so far? Okay, so let's try it in code, okay? Let's switch to code.